decomposing price effect into substitution effect and income effect. Hicks and Allen Watson, equivalent variation in income approach. Already I uploaded a video lesson using the compensating variation in income approach. If you want, you shall view it also. The link is given in the description. We shall go to equivalent variation in income approach. IC1 is tangent to the price line PL at point E1. The consumer is in equilibrium at E1 to begin with. He buys M1 units of good X. Price of good X falls. Seven important things happen after the fall. They are 1. The point L moves to the right and reaches L2. 2. New price line PL2 is formed. 3. Good X becomes relatively cheap. 4. The real income of the consumer increases. That is, the purchasing power goes up. 5. A new equilibrium is formed at E3 where price line PL2 is tangent to IC2. The consumer moves along the price consumption curve and reaches point E3. 6. He buys M3 quantity of good X. 7. The net increase in quantity demanded is M1, M3. The net increase M1, M3 is due to price effect. A part of this increase is due to income effect or increase in the real income of the consumer. The other part is due to substitution effect or relative cheapness of good X. We shall split these two effects following the equivalent variation in income approach. For this, assume there is no fall in the price of good X. Prices of both goods remain the same. How shall we make the consumer to reach IC2 and enjoy a higher level of satisfaction? The only way open to us is to increase the income of the consumer. Okay, we give him additional income. But how much? The increase in income must be sufficient enough to reach IC2. With an increase in income, the price line PL moves to the right and becomes tangent to IC2 at point E2. This is an equilibrium point. The new price line is P1 L1. The consumer moves from E1 to E2 along the income consumption curve. He buys M2 units of good X. The net increase M1, M2 is due to income effect. Price of good X remaining the same. Had there been an increase in the income of the consumer, this could have happened. Actually, the price of good X has fallen. After a fall in price, good X becomes relatively cheap. This makes the consumer to move from point E2 to E3 by substituting good X in the place of good Y and reach point E3. He buys M3 units. The net increase M2, M3 is due to substitution effect. At last, we shall have it like this. M1, M3 net increase is due to price effect. Of this, M1, M2 net increase is due to income effect and M2, M3 net increase is due to substitution effect. Before I conclude, let me tell you one thing. If you want to understand income effect and substitution effect with a numerical example, watch my video on Reasons for Demand Curve to Slope Downward. The link is given in the description.